Hi, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Hao. I work for Google. Uh, actually, in this talk, I'm going to uh, actually is a BPF use case. I'm going to share my experience of uh, BPF tracing to debug a a kernel performance regression. It's an I think it's a very interesting uh, um, case. So some uh, first of all, some background and then. A of a statement of the problem, uh, what we discovered, and then how do I root cause the, the problem. And then the, the second part, um, we are going to use a BPF to do some analysis on the swap page default, uh, a brief introduction to that. Uh, so this actually, uh, me on my side, I'm going to d introduce my experience of uh, using BPF root cause a uh, performance regression. And Chris, um, uh, he probably will join me later, but I can also cover his part later. He's going to, sh uh, this is a, a project uh, Chris and I are working on together to do using BPF to analyze the uh, latency issues that we discovered in our production uh, system that uh, uses uh, swap page defaults. Uh, so, some, the background is the problem that we found. Uh, so, uh, in Google, we have uh, we are upgrading our production kernel from 4.15 uh, to 5.10 kernel. And uh, when we are deploying this uh, 5.10 kernel in production, we discovered uh, some issues. Uh, basically, the container folks told us that uh, on 5.10, uh, on, on the old kernel of uh, 5.15, uh, we have a uh, latency uh, when we write the CPU set, uh, CPU's uh, file, it's a C group file. Uh, the latency mostly, uh, the majority within P99 or within like uh, 10 milliseconds or something. Uh, and um, when we are upgrading to 5.10, we discover that the majority of the latencies now becomes like a uh, 90 milliseconds or 80 milliseconds. You can see that uh, this is a big difference, and especially it's very bad uh, in the case where you have a lot of uh, uh, small jobs that are allocated, create a lot of uh, small containers. It's a problem, and uh, my task is to find out why this is so. So my best guess is that uh, there is something very costly happened in the code pass in this operation, this kernel operation. Uh, I thought it might be, I think it might be just a lock contention uh, because you have so many threads that contain the lock that grab in this pass and uh, let's verify if, uh, if that is true. So let's see if we can measure the lock contention. Uh, so luckily my colleague Nam Yang uh, recently introduced a couple of trace points uh, that traces the beginning and the end of the log acquisitions, the slow pass. Uh, These uh, trace points are available uh, in 5.19, and we backported back to our old kernel and the 5.10 kernel. And uh, with these uh, trace points, we can measure the time that a thread is spent in the contention pass, that's the slow pass. Um, so when, when a thread acquires a lock, it first goes to the fast pass. It basically is a try to see if the lock is available, just to get the pass. But if the lock is not available, going to the slow pass. And the profiling uh, I scoped, uh, is scoped in the special function. That's a function, the kernel function is the code pass that uh, I'm interested in. That's a CPU set write arrest mask. And then I collect the samples for the time durations uh, in this uh, log contention. I exported the samples through the rim buffer and uh, esti es estimate its uh, quantiles in the rim buffer uh, to get the tails, like a P90 or median or something. And uh, I also tried that to implement the quantile estimators uh, using BPF. I think it's doable. That's what I mentioned yesterday, the talk, that uh, it's totally possible to implement a T-digest, uh, this quantile estimator, purely in BPF. And I compared the results uh, on 5.10 against uh, uh, 4.15. Uh, it turns out the result is that on 5.10, we have a much, much higher uh, lock contention. Uh, this is under our production workloads. Uh, how? Quick question. Yeah. Oh, right here. Um, hi. Uh, s just out of curiosity, did you guys try enabling like lock stats 
and kind of using like the built-in kernel mechanism for tracking contention? Or was the idea to just not have to do anything and just use VPF without? Mm, to, to enable log stats, you need to compile the instrumentation in the kernel, right? This is yeah. a pure production level kernel without uh, any instrumentation or deb not any debug, some debug info, but not enable log stat. So we just uh, want to enable it at the runtime, uh, log once without the building support. Okay. Yeah. Um, sounds good. Uh, do you guys think that you would add what you built to uh, to a BCC? And I don't want to I don't want to capitalize, but just had to just had a curiosity. I mean, I think it would be generally extremely useful to be able to get essentially on demand lock stats from VPF without having to enable enable lock stats. So if uh, if you think there's anything generally useful, yeah, I, awesome, I, yeah. I definitely think so. This is the motivation of this talk. I want to just uh, oh, that's why you're here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I want probably not uh, anyone, man, not many people know that there is a trace point uh, to monitoring the slow paths of the locking. So this is the uh, the profiles I get on 4.15 and 5.10. Uh, you can see that on the P90, P95, it's super long, it's, it's shifted. So uh, that's not the full story. When we know that there's a lot of contention, but we want to know the cause of the contention, so this the next question is that uh, how do we find the cause of the contention? Uh, so my idea is that uh, since you know which lock is content, we, we first need to know the which lock is the contention because in the code pass you could grab multiple locks. Uh, there are a C group lock, there is a, 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 a thread group mutex. Uh, the one, uh, the right now uh, my colleague uh, Nam Yang has this perf lock contention that could perf get this profile information. But the problem is that it's a little difficult to map the lock address back to the symbol of the lock. For global lock, this is okay because uh, the global lock have a fixed kernel address, you can map it back. But many locks that are difficult to do so. For example, uh, for the locks that's inside the super blocks, uh, we only know the lock address, but we don't know which super block contains the, the lock and uh, then it's a little difficult. Uh, also, the common lock that we know that uh, uh, heavily contained is the uh, VMA's uh, MAM semaphore, if I remember correctly, and uh, it's a per process lock, basically. Uh, you, we know the address of a lock, but we don't know the, the, the process or the VMA that contains that lock. Uh, but anyway, so we, we, we can actually hard code it, uh, we can convert the lock address into the common lock and then take a guess to see if it's uh, some common uh, data structure that contains the lock. Luckily, we identified that uh, the lock that causes the contention is the CPU rewrite SAM. Um, so um, another uh, thing that I did uh, in addition to identify its lock is that uh, I write a custom program. Uh, in that program that attaches to the, uh, the entry of the lock contention, and then I set a timer uh, in that uh, program to say, uh, uh, set a timer to say, let's say 32 milliseconds, when it expires, uh, the callback of the timer will record the state of the lock information. For example, the lock owner, uh, the, um, uh, the state of the lock, uh, or which one, which thread is waiting for the lock, and then export that information through the room buffer, so the user space could see that, uh, oh, okay, I've been waiting in this lock for too long, it exceeds uh, 32 milliseconds, and uh, what the state it is, and then that could also help uh, the user space to debug. And using this tool, I verified that on, on 415, the older kernel, there's no contention that's uh, beyond this threshold, but on 5.10, we have uh, so many that, uh, uh, instances that uh, happened beyond this threshold. I can confirm that uh, this, is, um, the, 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 this is a problem, and the lock uh, of, uh, of problem is a CPU set reverse semaphore. So like I said, uh, we need to find the cause of the contention. So how do we do that? Let's, uh, one idea is to say, let's check the critical sections uh, for, for these logs. Uh, luckily, we only have a few kernel functions that uh, takes this uh, CPU set to uh, semaphore. 
So what I did was that I write a program that's uh, attached at the lock acquisition and lock release, and also scope the profiling within the possible, uh, the, the, the kernel functions that possibly hold the lock. Uh, luckily, there are just a, a handle for all of these kernel functions, so it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's doable. Uh, so by profiling the length of the critical sections, I discovered the kernel functions that uh, takes uh, too much time uh, holding this uh, CPU set from my phone. So I think one thing useful is that, uh, is look, you can see there's a pattern, right? We want to have a scope or profiling within some, uh, a single entry, for example, like a, a single kernel function or some set of uh, kernel single functions. And um, uh, I think this will be something might be a useful uh, 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 a helper uh, to be added as a library that could be shared for many log uh, uh, profiling results. And the result here is that we find that this particular function, CPU set, right with some uh, mask, has a very long critical sections. Um, then what do we do? And uh, then I, then the rest of the thing is that just to take a look at the code and to see what happened. So I compared the code between the, the old kernel and the new kernel, particularly in this function. And I, I noticed that there is a particular function, rebuild root domains, that is a conditionally called in this function. What it does is that it iterates all the CPU set C groups, and for each C group, it iterate, iterates all the tasks within that C group. That is, has very high overhead. Uh, what it's the intention to do this uh, traversal is that it wants to find the deadline tasks in this uh, C group. But our production system never has any deadline tasks. So even so we're just uh, paying a very high cost, but just uh, for nothing in, in our workload, under our workload. Uh, so uh, as a quick experiment, I just uh, disabled this traversal in the, in the lock. Um, and then just uh, give it a try to see if it works. So this is the result that I get an uh, uh, experiment on that. So you can see that uh, uh, without traversing this uh, whole CPU CSC group and the tasks, the I bring back the, the latencies from P90 back to like uh, within 20 minutes, seconds. So it's much better than before. Uh, so, I searched the mailing list to see if someone found this issue, and uh, uh, some uh, Cass Yusuf from also from Google independently discovered that uh, this uh, traversal is problematic. They reported that uh, it's gonna um, uh, increase the, the, the time of uh, uh, resume not suspend. Uh, but the scale they reported is much lower than what I found here. We, I found that it's uh, increased for for 60 milliseconds. Probably on his uh, on his environment with a mobile system, it's not that many tasks. It's uh, uh, more like uh, 20 milliseconds, but it's still a, a problem. Uh, so we independently found this and reported to, to upstream, and uh, uh, and uh, then there's a fix that is uh, coming. And but one thing to note that. Is, uh, there are still tails, uh, even after this fix. You can see that there are still some some samples that are between uh, 20 milliseconds to 200 milliseconds. What's wrong with that, actually? Uh, so it, so the rest of the thing is uh, something was uh, I didn't use the BPF to to get an answer. Uh, so I noticed that uh, on the older kernel, the lock was a mutex. Uh, but on the new kernel, it's a per CPU rewrite semaphore. Um, in the per CPU rewrite semaphore, probably is a less known fact that the writer or the, the writer path to get the that uh, per CPU rewrite semaphore will be heavily penalized. The reason is that it will have to call a synchronized RCU uh, to wait, and then in order to get the lock. But uh, the trade-off of that is that the reader of this uh, per CPU resume for can get the lock much faster. Uh, so what I tried was uh, to I tried was to switching from this uh, per CPU resume for to mutex, and uh, now you can see that the tails uh, beyond this uh, 20 milliseconds 
are now gone. Uh, so this is a two, I think, two important fixes we need to have it in the upstream kernel. And uh, luckily, that uh, um, yesterday I, I saw that uh, uh, the fix is already merged uh, by Tejan in the C group uh, branch. So I think uh, it should be available in uh, 6.5. Uh, the second part is about something we want to use a BPF to analyze the uh, swap page fault. This is a kind of a collaboration with my colleague Chris Lee. Um, okay, he probably in the in, in the MM uh, track, uh, but uh, but I can basically cover that. Uh, we also in our production system we also have some issues of uh, tail latencies when we um, when we get this uh, swap page fault. Uh, and we have no, no we, we don't know what happened. Uh, the very first thing that we want to get is that uh, at which stage uh, this uh, tail latency come from. Uh, I, so Chris provided me a list of uh, kernel functions and it then break up, break down this, uh, uh, this uh, handle mm fault into several steps, that give me the key kernel functions. And then we put the, um, uh, the BPL programs to take the timestamp and uh, each uh, step, and then to do a calculation to measure the, dur the duration of uh, each uh, um, each uh, steps. So uh, some results Chris found was that they, pr they put his, his analysis uh, into some experiment machine, some experiment workload. Uh, he found that uh, the contributor for the tail latency comes from this uh, a free swap slot, and uh, uh, yeah, basically it's a free swap slot. Uh, so this is actually a very good indication for us to have a better understanding of uh, what happened in our production system and uh, where we should be looking at next and uh, what's the cause of that. Oh, this is 515 kernel. and. Uh, Right, uh, so yeah, so this is uh, actually the very first uh, step we want to use in BPF to understand the our system, especially to capture these uh, long tails in many kernel operations, like a page fault or, or kernel operations. Uh, further, we want to take a look at it, develop more kind of a BPF uh, profiling tools that to analyze this uh, uh, swap page faults uh, uh, results. So uh, that's basically basically just uh, share my experience and then to to see if people have any comments or something. Uh, uh, one thing I think it should be beautiful, I think maybe related to the talk later, is that uh, uh, we also have uh, some observe some contention uh, in from coming from superblock. But we can't associate the lock address to the super blocks address, so we don't know which file system caused the contention. Uh, we are thinking that maybe have a super block iterator may help, because if we can iterate the super block, we can validate the lock address against the lock that we we get, and then we can determine which super block, which file system caused the, the contention. But it's a. Uh, uh, Thank you. No, super interesting talk. Uh, please, as uh, David said, please open source everything you can. Okay. And uh, <laughs> stuff that you cannot, like we'll take a look. Uh, really awesome stuff. Uh, for the uh, address of the lock, uh, do you have a trace point in the things like mutex and it? Because uh, I think currently the old macroses, at least for the spin lock, I'm not sure whether they are for mutexes maybe as well. So if you put a trace point there, you potentially can just like collect all of the addresses. So I think my understanding why you can identify the dynamic uh, addresses like inside the dynamically allocated structures logs, because well they are dynamic, right? So so if you have uh, because they go through the, through the init, you just put a trace point there and record all, all of the addresses. It. We, we know the lock's address, but we don't know the kind of the owner's address. Is that the question you're asking? Yeah, but I'm saying like when you record the address at the time of init, 
you do it once, you know the address of what you need and, and you collect the stack trace so you know like where it's being collected and then the where it's being emitted and then humans can easily identify. I, I never thought about this, maybe it's doable. Uh, like even, even without recording the address, <coughs> once you know the contention, and this is kernel only, so user space is not involved, just collecting a stack trace with line numbers, like humans can just look and say, well, this is the most contended, and this is the stack trace from the yeah. most contended. You just look at the source yeah. and see what. Yeah, so uh, yes, uh, the, as I mentioned that a perf can do this log contention analysis. It also reports the stack, or only observe this contention. Uh, but it doesn't solve all the problem. We want to know if the lock is contended, who caused the contention, who own, who is owning the lock, who holds the lock right now. That is actually uh, more valuable information or important, but not all the locks record this owner information, only mutex uh, and the regress semaphore, not all of them. So, um, but luckily for, for common lock type, this we have that information, and uh, we can take I a I thought th this is only for contended, right? So the trace point only in the slow pass of yeah. like spin lock. Yeah. I see. So when it's uh, getting locked, you're saying there is no, like when the spin lock, for example, getting locked, there is no owner field, and you cannot, like there's no trace point there, so you cannot record it offline. Right. right. We, we don't know who holds the lock, and uh, there are locks that uh, the lock acquisition also in line, so we can also not uh, trace this uh, lock acquisition function. It's very difficult to get uh, to keep track of uh, who owns the lock right now. Um, that's the main problem, but luckily in some common cases, we, we can identify the lock and uh, the owner of this information. Nice talk. Uh, so recently I had to navigate the complexities around sock lock, wi which is which is like a very unique lock in the sense that it's a spin lock in the bottom half. It's a mutex uh, when you're contending with the user space mm. code. I, I was wondering if we can extend this framework to inspect the sock lock. So certainly you can. We, the trace points are already added for all all the types of uh, lock in the kernel, spin lock, mutex, regress semaphore, for all of them. The problem is that how do you map the, map the lock address into the meaningful context? Map to is a probably a socket or, or something. Like Alex said, we can record the stack trace to get a better knowledge, uh, but exactly who owns the lock or, or what the object contains the lock is a largely um, no unified solution in this. Okay, uh, but I was wondering, like, c can you dump more context around the lock? For example, is the BH disabled or not? Or is IRQ, soft IRQ enabled or not? Something like that. Yeah, you can, you can. Uh, it's a kernel state, right? BPF, you can inspect the kernel state. Like, uh, you can get the preempt uh, con context or, or the locks, uh, the any fields in that lock, if you have a record, you can dump it out, right? Yeah. Also, I'm interested in measures in the lock contention of the BPF allocator. You have this uh, per CPU <laughs> lock, right? It's, uh, okay. Sorry, um, so why can't we find the owner if we can just uh, inspect the lock struct itself? The, uh, because uh, some lock doesn't uh, record the owner. Okay, so just, uh, they just don't store it at all? So you Not stored at all, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you could have somebody else free it and it wouldn't know, and okay, I see. Mm, yeah. Well, and, and you don't want to trace the hot path, like you were saying, right? So you could record it. So, so, sometimes you sometimes you can't even trace it. It's in line from it's in line. line. Yeah. Any other questions? Feedback? <coughs> All right. Thank, Thank you very much. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you.